Okay, I think I messed up on a video. Happy? And today I'm here to potentially correct a, or make a right or wrong? No, a wrong or right? Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the Untrained Unprofessional Workbench. I'm Nobody and thanks for being here. Now, today I'm trying to say that uh, I'm, I think I messed up. I mean, basically, I, I did a video and I, I had some conclusions that I think were, or I thought were pretty solid. And then as time went by, um, I had this like little gnawing sensation in the back of my head and it just wouldn't go away. So. I, just for my own sanity, I, I got to try to correct it and I'll go over everything <laughs> that I think happened. So now you're wondering, it's like, okay, well, what did you do, nobody? Well, it has everything to do with the PSA upper and the bedding and the accuracy if we can make this a more accurate upper. And yeah, I messed up. Now, there were some things about this that I kind of paid attention to, but I did not actually come to the right conclusion about what was happening at the time on particularly this first issue, which uh, we'll get to in just a moment. But there were other things that I did not double check on it to give the barrel bedding the best shot possible. So we're gonna go ahead and go over everything and try to reduplicate the test after I do the work that is necessary on this to give it a shot. All right guys, so the first thing is, is the overgassing of the system. And I had a very forward ejection pattern. I wasn't coming off here at the four o'clock, which as you can see, I have a nice little uh, clock dial here, not too shabby if I don't say myself. I got the ejection port lined up with the three o'clock, so we're gonna be able to see exactly where it's ejecting. Now, my concern is, is with the overgassing that the bolt could be starting to unlock before the bullet exits. Whether that's true or not, I, I don't know. We're, we're gonna start eliminating some things. So I, I want to eliminate this as a factor, but I gotta first see exactly where it's going. Now, the uh, conditions that I'm testing today versus when I was testing in the earlier video, it, it's a little different. It, it's about 43 degrees out right now, and it was in the 80s and, and 90s beforehand. So how that affects uh, the pressures and everything, I don't know. Much smarter people can figure that out, but for posterity, that's where it is. So let's see what the ejection pattern is. All right, so I did several rounds and getting anywhere between like one and two o'clock, seems like they're going a little bit closer to the two o'clock. So probably, you know, 130, 145 is the guesstimate. Now, if it is unlocking early, that could explain this guy right here, which I'll show the earlier video of how that came about. Wow. Here's what happened. I had a partial extraction. <laughs> the back end of the case actually ejected out. This was partially attached apparently and broke as it was coming out and another round was feeding in and so it caused a malfunction. So, but yeah, so if it was unlocking early, you know, before uh, it should, that could explain why that guy exists. Now, for those of you who are saying, hey, nobody, you're supposed to be working on the 1911 project. Don't worry, just let me get this out of my system. That way I can focus on it. Because after all, I do miss you. 
My precious. Okay, that wasn't weird at all, right? Let me take my medicine and we'll get back to this. Well, luckily for me, I did put an adjustable gas block on when I kind of reconfigured this upper and I just didn't use it. So brilliant. Yeah. So all I have to do is adjust the uh, gas block and hopefully should be there. Now, the second thing that I was concerned about, and I didn't really know until I went out to the range this morning and I wanted to make sure that the rounds were not getting gouged as they were going into the barrel extension. You know, thinking that, you know, it's like, okay, nice little gouges, you know, could affect the flight path of the round potentially. So while I was out there, I went ahead and chambered three different rounds. I'm sure you can, or hopefully you can see the little boogers on there. What does that mean? Well, I, I need to take off any sharp corners on those uh, feed ramps in the extension and might as well as polish it while I'm there to fo for nice, smooth, reliable uh, feeding of the rounds. How much that's going to affect? I don't know. We'll find out. All right, got the barrel broken loose from the uh, bedding compound and looking here at the feed ramps, which you can see the copper on this left one and here on the right. I was test fitting <laughs> the Kratex and then realized that I was rubbing off copper and so sorry, but you can see where both sides have sharp corners here. And I think that is mostly our offending part here for the feeding. So I wanna break these corners here and then polish this really good to try to make a really nice smooth transition. Once I break these corners, I'm going to try to polish this area with a medium, then the fine, and then I'll use a little uh, polishing compound and try to get this mirrored. Okay, I'm going to start with the medium here. Now going with a fine. Okay, that's looking better, isn't it? Now I think I'll swap over to a felt bob with uh, some polishing compound. Okay, so last thing that we're going to do, or the last thing that I'm gonna do, unless I think of something else along the way, but I, I don't know how tight the bolt is actually locking up. So what the headspace is. Is it a nice tight headspace or is it a loose headspace? Well, I do have some extra carriers and hoping that I can find the tightest bolt, or at least tighter than the one that it came with. Now, if the one that it came with happens to be the tightest one, well, that's what I'm gonna use. You know, I don't have a thousand of these bolts lying around, so I'm just gonna use what I have. So, but I'm, I am gonna check that to see if I can find a tighter headspace. So that way it could hopefully make it a little more accurate. All right, guys, so gonna try to see if I can figure out a better bolt. And to do that, I have some Lake City, 5.56, this is a 5.56 barrel. And I have some 77 grain, 5.56 IMI. Now what I'm gonna do is, yeah, this is not scientific, but honestly, I can't find my, uh, <laughs> my headspace gauges. So I have some 5.56 somewhere around here, but I'd like to get this video out a little bit sooner. So very unscientific. I'm just going to work it in and see how easy it is to turn the bolt. Consistent even pressure. It, it, it actually turns very easy on that. 
Don't know if it's end of the world. Gonna see if we can find a better one. Yeah, again, even pressure doesn't take a whole lot on the palmetto. So that's palmetto. This one right here, I could not get the pin out, so I'm not able to use that one. Okay, next guy. Have to push in just a little bit more. So a little tighter. I think I'm going to go with this one and just because it feels a little smoother but still feels tighter than the palmetto so I think we're getting a little bit better headspace and lockup on this guy. In case you're wondering if I checked the fit of the upper to the lower, yeah, I did. This thing is actually pretty good. I, I, I can't get it to move at all. So how that actually just happened to, to work out, I don't know, but it's rock solid. I don't have to worry about the play between the upper and lower because there is none. All right, so got it rebedded and shimmed and everything. Also, the one thing that I did was here on the adjustable gas block, I kind of clearanced it just a little bit more because looking down, it was pretty tight. Um, it wasn't touching, but just in case if I bear down on it, it would touch. So give it a little bit more of a clearance. So next video, we'll get out and see what it does.